Okay. In your view, uh, I, this is back to uh, Dr. Miller Saunders. In your view, are bacteria from fish farms, such as mouth rot, a source of harm that should be reduced to the maximum extent possible? And maybe you can speak about what is the emerging re research on the potential for mouth rot from fish farms to have population level effects on wild Pacific salmon? Well, it's, um, it's Tenacivaculum is the agent. Mouth rot is a disease that, um, that the agent causes in Atlantic salmon. So it's not mouth rot that has the uh, impact. But um, as I said before, um, Tenacivaculum was coming out in our models as being one of the most consistently associated with population level impacts. Um, but moreover, in, in sockeye salmon, we found that the highest incidence of infection uh, was in fish migrating past farms in the Discovery Islands. And we then employed spatial and epidemiological models and fit the data from migrating sockeye salmon to identify um, um, whether farms in Discovery Islands uh, were a source or the dominant source of tenacibaculum infection along uh, the Fraser River sockeye salmon migration route. We saw, we not only did the models confirm that, the best fitted models um, um, confirmed that, that the highest source of, of tenacibaculum was uh, around the Discovery Island farms. We were also able to show that, um, that in the water column, that, that tenacibaculum was one of the agents most, most strongly concentrated around active farms compared to fallow farms. So there was a lot of tenacibaculum in the water column. Further, we looked at whether or not treatment of mouth rot was uh, a correlated factor with um, the potential transmission into wild fish. We did not find that there was any effective treatment that simply a, a farm being stocked with um, fish was, was enough to create a risk to wild migrating salmon. Thank you, Mr. Johns. 